Hi guys, um, I'm just going to quickly show you how to take your ZBrush character model and how to render it in ZBrush with different materials to bring to Photoshop if that's the way you want to create your creature concept or if you want to render it in a Substance Painter just to get some colors and materials on. As I said, um, it's, it's, there's two or three ways you can do it to create a process. There's no real pipeline for this. Uh, there's lots of ways to experiment. So a way I used to do it would be if this is my character, what I would do first is, let me see, I'm going to just press T to turn off my 3D layer to clear. And now my document much bigger for a render for ZBrush, okay? So I would go up maybe, I go up to about 6,000 by 3,000 for the purpose of this video. We're going to go 2 by 1,200. Just remember as well that you need to scroll back out so you can see the edge because you don't want a tiny model here in the middle of the screen. Something like this will happen in Photoshop by mistake. You need that model to be the full size. And remember as well, uh, for your finished pieces, you need something like this. And you can do it a couple of ways. So we can go duplicate, duplicate and sub tool. And we can have our first guy over here. And our second guy turning. So we have a side profile. The third guy, there's lots of ways to do this. Our third guy should be over here, completely turned so you can see kind of a, a back view. Okay, that's what you want in Photoshop for the end, your final piece to be like this with other colors. Okay, so what we want is let's the best way to do this is you go document export and I call this one goblin red play save. Now, ideally, I've saved that with the pixels. It looks very pixelated, but what I really want is render best. This sometimes crashes out, and that's why I save one first. So you can see now it's saying rendering with GI shadows, and you can see the difference. You can see it rendering there in the middle. It takes a while to do this. So I'm not going to do this with every material. I'm just showing where the render button is. So that's the render. I'm going to go document, export. I've got Goblin Red Clay 1, so we're going to go Goblin Red Clay HR for high res. Okay, and press save. Now, what I do for a lot of my renders, if I do it this way in Photoshop, is I go go back into materials and I'll change that to a kind of a, this is my favorite skin tone, Matte Cat Skin 4. I do that across all my models. Now, it's, now, the reason that's so slow is I forgot to turn back off the best preview render. So now it's rendering a bit slower, so I'll turn it off for the next material, okay? So that's rendering a skin tone for me. I'm gonna go document, export, goblin, I'm gonna call this two, goblin, skin tone, HR, okay? Now I am doing this at half size, so the rendering doesn't take as long and on screen, and obviously for the artwork that you need to upload, for your blog for the portfolio. I'm looking at maybe about 3000 by 2000 pixels at 300 DPI in Photoshop for your finished piece. That should give you a good finished piece, whether you render it from Substance or whether you render it from Photoshop, okay? Um, the other thing to think about is if you were gonna print this for the wall, you'd want it to be a kind of a nice big um, A3 size with not too much pixelation. I work much bigger for my artwork, but that would take a lot more time to render for the for let's say this video. Okay, so that's our clay is done. I'm just gonna go back to render and go uh, preview. Okay, you can see the difference pop up there. Now I'll change the, again to, I go down to one of these framers, like this is a good frame two now. A lot of highlights. I'm actually gonna see what this looks like in best preview. This one is taking a while. So this one will give you a nice blend option in Photoshop where you'll get like nice black shadows and stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna go document, export again, and we'll go number three, goblin, highlights. Save. And we'll try the process again, and I actually like using stuff like, we could use a color glow here. Kind of works for this guy, because he's a goblin.
or we'll go and use this the normals normal RGB mat um, I like this because you can change it in Photoshop to using hue saturation or color balance to give it kind of weird and different abstract shadows on your model and we'll go document export and we'll go number four goblin RGB Save. okay now with that done you could go back to your red mat Again, we've still got like, the best preview render on. So I'm going to turn it off for the next bit. Because what we don't want to see at the end is just a red clay goblin concept head. I want to see texture and color on these things. So I'll go to um, back into render and I'm just going to go preview. And that should do it. Okay, and now the next thing we want to do is go to, I'm going to go to um, white. Okay, so they're all white. I'm going to texture and just grab a texture that's in Photoshop. Like I can go to import and I go to my own textures. And this is different because it's on a Mac for the what you're looking for, but okay, open a texture there. So texture is off right now, so texture on. Standard brush, put it to drag, turn off Z add, turn on RGB. And there's an alpha on, so we do turn the alpha off. Alpha off. We can put my textures on the model. It won't translate to these two because they are now 2.5D, but if you were doing it, do it to the start on all of them and then create. This is where ZBrush gets pipeline y. Create the first one here, put your texture on it, and then sub tool it and rotate them if you want. Okay, we go document export again. We did do all that again. Okay, so with, I'm going to quit out of ZBrush now with that one. I'm going to say no. I'm going to open Photoshop. Go to was it desktop where I put these guys? Where did I put my goblins? Goblin. And they are in. Yeah, they're in a different folder. So I'm going to open the first one, Red Clay HR. In Photoshop. Okay, I'm going to duplicate that layer, which is Command J. Or I can go and drag it to this to do it. Or I can go duplicate layer here in Photoshop. Okay, I'm going to go Auto Color. Really makes it come up a bit sometimes. Or Auto Contrast with the Red Clay. Sometimes jumps as well. Or camera raw filter is one of my new favorite tools in Photoshop for really highlighting. So shadows up, clarity up, bit of contrast, and now your creature has a bit more oomph. Okay. Now what I'd really like you to try and do as well is my good and my favorite old trick, which is duplicate layer, go to desaturate, and then set that in the blend modes to soft light, and you'll get some nice shadows. Okay, and you can put that as your top layer. So you can just maybe call it, you can call it shadows here. Sorry, for some reason I can't label it, so shadows. Okay, now under the shadows layer, it's all up, it's up to you how much you want to do this. So I'm going to drag in skin tone as a smart object and uh, place, place it. I'll drag in my highlights and place it. And I'm going to drag in my RGB and place it. Okay. You could use any of the materials in ZBrush, but it's up to you, you know. So with the shadows, I'm going to put that to the top and I set that to soft light. Right. So that's going to give me a bit more stuff going on. And I will also set the RGBs, right? And the skin tone. Let's set it to something else. Let's go overlay. Okay. So now we're starting to come together. Now with this one. The RGBs, I want a rasterize layer because I really want to change it. So the color balance, I'm going to make it shadows. I'm going to make it all greens and reds, right? And kind of really, because it's a goblin we're working on here. So I want it to be very different in the skin tones. Maybe use saturation, mess with them a bit there and saturations there, whatever. And what I'll do is I'll go into the magentas now and bring that down. I don't want as much purple. Bring down the reds. 
we don't want as much. Okay, and then over here in the opacity, maybe bring it down a bit because it's quite strong. So there's the goblin, right? So then with my soft light layer, my highlights on top, right? It's kind of cool, but it's a bit dark. And so is that one. So I turn off the shadows for a while, put it up a bit. I like this, but it's a bit dark. So if I go in and camera raw filter that one, maybe if we bring up the shadows and the clarity right up so there's more contrast, bring up the contrast there and the exposure. There you go. Now we just got a bit of nice highlighting going on. And you could change that again, maybe put it to multiply. So it's just the, the blacks and the whites are transparent. It's up to you. It kind of looks kind of cool now. I like that one. You can just try different blend modes. It's up to yourself what you want to do. Bring the skin up on top. And set the skin to soft light or to set the skin to screen and see what happens. And then we'll put the highlight back above it. Now he's looking pretty goblin y. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go grab a texture. So I'll take that texture, one of these textures I had already picked, and drag it in. And what's fun about this is if I set that there to soft light now, I can actually put this over my goblin somewhere to get a skin tone and press enter. Now I want to rasterize that again because what I actually want to do is go in and get the clone tool. If you just get this, um, even the eraser, there's loads of ways of doing this. You can use masks or whatever. I'm going to set up a PSD file of this on the drive so you can see the whole folder and how it was done. I'm just going to take off the edges. I'll just set it to normal so I can see it first. Take off any hard edges so we just got a bit of texture on the model. Okay, you can do this with a layer mask with grading tools if you want, but for concept, you don't have to get overly concerned with non, what's called non-destructive editing. Oops, wrong button. Marquee tool again. And bring that back there and just go soft light. And great thing about doing this with the white background Everything's white. So I'll duplicate that and drag it down, put it in the shoulder, duplicate again, we put it on that face, duplicate again, bring it over to this guy, and just, you know, you can use a clone tool and copy it across or just make loads of layers of it. It's up to yourself. Lots of ways of doing this. And when I'm finished that, my last, there's lots of ways we can bring this up and do different highlights. One of my favorite things to do when I'm finished doing texturing is on the top layer, I'll go line work. Okay, and what I do here is I get a small brush. I use this one a lot in Photoshop, or you can just use a hard brush set to a very small pixel ratio. So we're looking at about between six and 10. So I'm gonna go eight. And we're going close. And with the white, we can start to fill in on the eyes maybe. You know, or else you can grab a photograph of an eyeball from somewhere. And what I want to do is I want to kind of put a white line on one side to kind of show light sources, like in a comic book style a bit, just to help highlight the model a bit. Like so a little bit of white there. So you can see that jawline that was gone missing with the white there. We just highlight the teeth. Maybe you give it more teeth. White line there. It's still a bit big actually, that white line. So uh, You can follow some of the guidelines from the alpha chant, the alpha mask, sorry, the alpha layer we made. So, that. It kind of helps to just give a bit of definition to my character. And across the board, you know, the white eye there. If you feel that your line work is too heavy or it looks out of place, you can actually set that again to soft light. Layer up a bit, see, by duplicating it. And on another layer, so I could call that line work white and make the other one black line. I do, this is just one of my own kind of things I do. There's a lot of other concept ways to do things. Some of you are more into painting, some of you are more into photo bashing, and kind of somewhere in the middle. So I do a bit of black line there, make the black line a bit fatter because I want to use it more as a shadow. Get into all the creases, you know, maybe around the ear and around that jowl there, so that it kind of helps to 
bring the head out from the body a bit, you know. Make sure it's a true black as well. Even create some more scars on him. Do I want to give him an eyeball? I don't know. I don't think so. I kind of like the eye white. But I might uh, give him another texture over the face there, just for scars. So this is soft like that. I'll just give that a quick, really small. What would that look like on hard light? That would be eyeball. So it look like his eyeball is really very low like that. I'm going to mask this one. Fill it black and then just rub it in a bit there. And back to my black line and just start drawing again. Start filling in some of the detail of the scars and scales. And back to my white one. Actually, even on the same one, I just draw a couple of teeth. And so on and so forth. And this one, it's all done. There's lots of ways I said of doing this. So there's my goblin, kind of. I got a full sheet done there now. If And there could be a lot more work I can do to that. Obviously, I want to see more full figure. I'm using the bust simply for the demonstration. What I want to, and what I often do is, let's say I go image duplicate, and with image duplicate, I've duplicated the file, not the layers. So I have a whole new version of the file, and I'm going to go flatten image, okay, duplicate the layer, and then I'm going to go filter, noise, median. And what median does is it gives that kind of painted blur, which will help to get rid of some of the pixels. Okay, now it's too much. So it's noise, median, maybe down to seven is too much on this low res file, so I go three. Okay, and what I want to do next myself is I'm going to go mask it, fill it with black so it's gone, and I'm only going to rub it out back in with a soft brush where there are major pixels, where stuff looks really pixelated on a ZBrush. Right there, so I get the detail but not the pixelation from ZBrush. And I still got my height kind of detail going on like that. Okay. And there is my goblin. Okay. Ready for my WordPress blog for character design.